Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's uh, nice having you in class again today. How are you doing? We are going to look at something very interesting on SOFA. We are going to use SOFA to determine or compute the volume of uh, earth material. Let's say you have um, a sand dump or maybe an excavated material and you want to determine the volume of the material that is being dumped. You know, one thing about the basics of volume is that in our elementary mathematics, we were taught that volume is simply area times height, right? Which means the extent covered multiplied by the vertical distance above the crown, simply put. So by the time you have that idea of a volume, you will be able to appreciate this particular approach we are going to share with you very soon. Now you might have a different uh, method how you do it or how you want to do it. However, this method is um, equally efficient. So let's say we have um, on our spreadsheet here, we have two edits. We have the material and we have the ground level. Now the essence of having the material and the ground level is this. Now the data under the ground level tells us the ground level before the dump before the earthwork or maybe the material was actually dumped on the ground. Then the material um, simply shows maybe some random points on the material, like some random points that we have picked from the material. So maybe you have um, the, um, the material that has been dumped and then you take some points randomly on that material. That's what this simply means. And then the ground level means before you dump, you do what you pick some points on the ground. Now, why do we have this tool? We have this tool because we want to have two surfaces. And upon having the two surfaces, we want to now determine the volume of the what of that particular dump. So this is how we are going to do. This is the approach we'll use on this video. So first off, we are going to move this um, our before ever we move it let's try to get the average height now the essence of having the average height for the ground level is that on sofa it will be needed it will be needed on sofa right so let's try to get the average so let's say we have an um, equal to what average right so let's see what this gives us we have something like this and let's move down here Good. So we are having an average of um, 9.4889, right? Good. Um, I need to copy this because uh, we will need it some other time. Or maybe we can still come back to it. So now we have um, 9.4889, right? Good. So that is the average height. Now, when we get to SOFA, when we get on SOFA, we are going to see where we will need this value of what 9.4889 or maybe 9.488 as the case may be current days matter. So we are going to move this um, this data we have here, which is the data for the material to what to SOFA, and from there we are now going to see what we can achieve with that. So now let's move on to SOFA. Good, so we are on SOFA now, right? So let's try to bring in the data we we'll use. We come to grid, we go to data, right? Good, so we now select the data we need, which is a spot height one. We open. Then we try to see how the data columns are set. For our X, we have our Easting. For our Y, we have our Northern. And then for our Z, we have what our H. So, view data. Um, there is a particular, or let's say there's a video here. Yeah, there's a video on the channel that will actually exhaustively explain how this process goes. So, we have this. And then I think we don't need to change. We don't need to change this 
creeding method we don't need to change it but if not for creeding we could have used triangulation with a um, linear interpolation right but let's still leave it at um, creeding so we can say okay so the grid file has been what has been created we now we try the volume computation so we come to volume right you go to grid and you do what you go to volume good now this is the grid file we just created we do what we open it good now this is where that averaging comes in now we want to determine the volume between two surfaces right the upper surface and lower surface by extension the upper surface means where the material has been done then the lower surface simply means the ground level right good it means the ground level now the constant of the height of that ground level is what we need from our what from our averaging which is this right which is this which is this so we can still copy we can still copy it and we do it and we paste it here good control v are we together so this is the crux of the video this is like the, it's the most important aspect of the video you know we have the the grid file for what the um the dump now this constant is being used because there was no should we call it um, topography of the ground level before ever the dump another important point you need to note there was no what topography of the ground before ever the dump was made let's say for instance before ever you dump the earth material will be the sand or whatever granite or whatever you have you had actually picked some random point just like you did on the on the material then we won't need the constant what we are going to need is just another grid file which should be equal to the first grid file that's another condition but let's leave that aside for now what we are working on now what we are working with now is that you don't have the random point for the ground you just have some points that you pick which are still random and you now did what you found the average of the height so we are now using the average of the height to approximate that okay that is the height of the crown are we together we are now using the average height we have there which we have shown you on excel that will be what the height of the ground and it's on that ground that what this upper surface was done are we together it's on this ground this um, 9.488 um, recurring decimal that this particular grid file was done and on this grid file we already have our what, our elevation so upon setting these two up then using the other gridding method that we have explained earlier or maybe we opined earlier it can now determine what the volume are we together good so it can now determine the volume the volume is actually quite small the data we've used on this video is to explain the process to you right good so you can see what the volume by trapezoidal rule, by Simpson's rule, and then by Simpson's 3A rule, right? So this is the volume of the earth material that has been done. And you can see level surface defined by Z by the elevation is what 9.488 whatever the case is. So this simply means that this is the elevation of the ground. So if maybe you had actually carried out the um, topo survey, let's call it topo survey carried out topo survey of the terrain of the terrain rather you can use that topo survey to create a grid file just like we created grid file for the earth material and you now use that uh, grid file as your lower surface however when you don't have that you just have an average height of some points you picked on the terrain okay this is the point before the sand or whatever it material was dumped are we together good so that will now serve as the elevation of or the level of what your lower surface right then you now use your grid file which was created for the earth material so you will now have what your volume for the volume of the material that was dumped 
So with this, we hope we have been able to provide solutions to this particular engineering problem. This is um, just um, a 3D view of the dump, a 3D view of the dump and you can see we are trying to do what we use this particular tool, trackball, we are trying to rotate it, you can rotate it at um, any angle and then you see how what the earth material is on the ground. So this is how the earth material is on the ground, maybe whatever the material, maybe sand, stone, whatever the case is. You can as well view it on the what on the 3D wireframe. You come to what a map and you go to a 3D wireframe. You select your grid file and then you open. So you can see how the two 3D depictions are of the particular terrain you have what you have worked on or you worked on. So with this, you can actually do whatever you want to do, like maybe picture what you've done. You can do what you can picture what you've done and you know you see how it is on the ground in a 3d view right three-dimensional view are we together just like we were able to do for the, uh, the 3d surface this is the 3d wireframe we are as well what, rotating it to see the different um, the different sides yeah different sides of our dome are we together so this is how you can about visualizing your dump in what in three dimensions thanks for coming to class if you have any issue you have any tax like this and you would want us to help you with it you can always contact us and we are going to get back to you as soon as possible we are going to see you on our next video until then keep being good at what you're doing and have a nice time bye